I'm about to tell you the shocking truth about David and Jonathan in the Bible. I'm about to reveal something to you about a verse in the Hebrew Bible that is often misquoted and misunderstood. And this may shock some of you, but I'm going to tell you the truth and not hold back a word. Is it true that Jonathan and David were a same-sex couple? Is it true that they were gay lovers? Is it true that the Bible records them as engaging in sexual acts to the point that David says to Jonathan, wow, you are hotter in bed than any other woman? Paraphrase. Absolutely, categorically not. Let me set the record straight once again. Were David and Jonathan soulmates? Yes. Did they have a deep brotherly love? Yes. Did they enter into a covenantal agreement to watch each other's back, take care of one another? Yes. Absolutely. Deep covenant loyalty, deep friendship, deep allegiance, deep brotherhood, as many have had with the same sex without any sexual connotation whatsoever. Here's what we also know. The Bible does not record them in any way committing a sexual act, not one. There are plenty of words in the Hebrew Bible to describe sexual activity. Not one is spoken regarding David and Jonathan. Oh, but they kiss. Everybody kissed in the Bible. Paul even instructed people to greet one another with a holy kiss. I mean, that's the way you greet it, one another. Kisses on each cheek. This was, this was normal. Or kiss on the cheek. A totally normal. Nothing unusual about that. And Jonathan married a woman and had children. David married many women. And even when he was married to many women, he still wanted to marry more women. And he had lots of kids. And on top of that... He ends up getting in big trouble because of his lust for a woman. He sees her and commits adultery with her and has her husband killed. You don't do that if you're attracted to the same sex. You would do, do that when you're attracted to the opposite sex and really struggling with lustful desires. You say, oh, but what about 2 Samuel chapter 1? What about what David says after Jonathan died? Well, let's, let's take a look at the text. So I'm going to start in 2 Samuel 1, 17. Saul, the father of Jonathan, and Jonathan are killed. So the king and his son Jonathan are killed in battle. And it says this, 2 Samuel 1, 17 on the screen. You can be looking at the new JPS translation. I'll read from the NIV so you can compare them. David took up this lament, verse 17, concerning Saul and his son Jonathan. And he ordered that the people of Judah be taught this lament of the bow. It is written in the book of Yashar. A gazelle lies slain on your heights, Israel. How the mighty have fallen. Tell it not in Gath. That's the territory of the Philist Philistines because the Philistines killed them. Proclaim it not in the streets of Ashkelon. Again, another Philistine city. Lest the daughters of the Philistines be glad. Lest the, lest the daughters of the uncircumcised rejoice. Mountains of Gilboa. May you have neither dew nor rain. May no showers fall on your terraced fields, for there the shield of the mighty was despised, the shield of Saul, no longer rubbed with oil. From the blood of the slain, from the flesh of the mighty, the bow of Jonathan did not turn back. The sword of Saul did not return unsatisfied. Saul and Jonathan, in life they were loved and admired. By the way, these words loved and admired, same roots will be used a, a bit down for Jonathan, but this is used for Saul and Jonathan, okay? Nothing to do with sexual love or romantic attraction. Saul and Jonathan, in life they were loved and admired, and in death they were not parted. They were swifter than eagles. They were stronger than lyres. Daughters of Israel, weep for Saul, who clothed you in scarlet and finery who adorns your garments with ornaments of gold. How the mighty have fallen in battle. Jonathan lies slain on your heights. I grieve for you, Jonathan, my brother. You are very dear to me. Your love for me was wonderful, more wonderful than that of women. How the mighty have fallen, the weapons of war have perished. Friends, it takes a sexually twisted mind to think that David, mourning for the king, Saul, 
and mourning for his dear friend and soulmate, Jonathan, in mourning for them, is now going to bring up, and Jonathan, you were really hot in bed. Woo! Having sex with you is better than having sex with him. What kind of sexually twisted mind would imagine that David is going to mourn over that? No, rather, wow, the, the friendship, the closeness, the love we had, it's better than any love I've had with women. Our relationship was deeper and more wonderful, more profound, more loving than anything I've had with women. Otherwise, to think that David, and this is going to be recorded in the Bible, is praising Jonathan as the same-sex lover, that's what you call Titus 1.15. To the pure, everything is pure, but to those that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure. Forget it, that a stitch of evidence that David and Jonathan were, quote, same-sex lovers. That is an insult to the Word of God and an insult to these men of God and an insult to God who made them the way he made them. So friends, time to move on from that myth. Hey friends, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, click on one of the boxes on the screen, check out another one of our videos and be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you don't miss a single video. You know, we discovered that about 60% of you that are watching our videos aren't subscribers. So subscribe today doesn't cost you a dime. And if you want to support our work, Line of Fire, and all the things that we do, follow one of the links on the screen below.